and we be mindful that what was God trying to do that this thing came upon us unawares, suddenly. Now, I'm going to say this before we go on, and I'm going to stress it when we go on. Could it be? And it is. He's trying to tell us something. Trying to get our attention. My brothers and sisters, don't miss this one and get caught up again in another one. The Lord is sending a strong message to the world that we live in. Now, the whole world don't have to get it. But you who confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to get it. Because the time will come when he called for the church to pray. And then he will respond. So you have to get it. And don't never look at it as something that came from China. Something that came from here. If it would have came from China and was meant for China, it would have stayed in China. But the devil thought he could wipe out the world. And God raised up a standard. If he could have had his way, he would have ended it. But the Lord said, no. They're going to learn from this one. And yes, I get, it. I get concerned about when I hear filling up the baseball stadiums, and football stadiums, and basketball arenas. And I love sports. And I, I want people to go back to those things. I want them to enjoy life. But I got a different message. They do what they do. I got to do what I do. I'm compelling people to come back to Christ. Because that's what's going to keep you. When the game is over, you either leave happy or mad. Based upon whether you win or lose. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, you're always victorious. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let us welcome our, our Facebook family and all the different social media groups that are with us this morning. Come on, let us put them hands together and give God some praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, cross the threshold that we may never do personally, but God, but God, and only God can bring us together this morning. House of Prayer, are you glad that they're with us this morning? Oh, House of Prayer, are you glad that they're with us this morning? Some of them may be different. Amen. So we welcome you, we welcome you, whether you're sitting there in your house coat, or whether you're just sitting there, and whatever you may be, listening to us or watching us in the garage, or whatever you may be doing, we welcome you, you, and you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you, God bless you, and we thank God for you. Hallelujah. We're always glad to be in the service. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for those that are joining in with us on social media. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that are here sitting here with us this morning. God, we came here to worship you and lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for all of your keeping power. Thank you for the favor that you bestow upon us throughout the week. Now, God, as we have assembled ourselves together today in the name of Jesus, we ask that your Holy Spirit will come in and arrest every one of us. Our attention, God, will be on thee, that you will be the main agenda here in the sanctuary and whatever home that we may be in this morning. We give you this time, God, and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, and, and those of you on Facebook, it is always a busy week. I, I noticed that, I told Linda this morning, I said, it's a strange tire that covers the world we live in, the, a, a cloud of, of doubt. 
And a cloud of doubt always brings with it a troubled mind, worried people. The world we live in now is, is full of uncertainty. What well, if it may be one thing or another, we all, a lot of people are wondering how their situation is going to turn out. Whether they, they do not lack financial means or they're not afflicted in their body or however or whatever they may be going through. A lot of people in the world we live in universally have doubt on their mind. And they wish, they wish that they, they pray that relief will come. And relief has already arrived, but when you consistently hear of trouble, when you consistently hear of murder, when you consistently hear of more people even dying from the COVID, and if none of that applies to you, when you just got to deal with what you got to deal with in your own life, it becomes a little bit much, doesn't it? And on Sunday morning, when you assemble yourselves in here in the sanctuary and those of you sit at home, the preacher gets before you. And he is there to declare a word from the Lord. And how many know a word from the Lord always brings relief? How, how many know that? A word from the Lord has a way of calming a troubled spirit, soothing a hurt heart. Just a word from the Lord. This morning, God has blessed us once again to give us a word. And I'm going to ask that you stand with me this morning and Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I, I was going to read just the four verses, but let, let me read it from 19 to 27 to you this morning. But my subject is coming from the 24th to the 27th. But can I read 19 to 27 this morning? For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I may gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I may gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, and I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. 24th verse, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run not, to, not as uncertainty, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring, I keep my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself 
to be a test. I want to get a little personal today. Y'all don't mind. My subject is running my race. You may be seated. Running. Say it to yourself. Running my race. Running my race. Not that they which run the race all receive the prize. Those that run it for a corrupt, corruptible crown. In the race of the Christian life, Paul wasn't content to receive a crown of just being a, acknowledged as a partici partici participator. He wanted to obtain the gold medal, as do all athletes, my brothers and sisters, who follow Christ should run. That's how we should run our Christian race. We do not run it to just receive nothing. We run it to receive the crown that Jesus Christ has promised us. Here we read in Matthew 25, 23, it says, we should run to receive the crown, and for this reason, if no other reason, to hear him say what? Well done, that good and faithful servant. Everyone who participates in a race, participates in train, a training pro program described by Paul here as some exercise of self-control in all things that they do. They need to maintain a strict diet, be prepared to engage in a training schedule that pushes them to the peak of their own mental and physical performance. They do this, Paul reminds us, to receive a perishable, was like a wreath, I believe they got going ahead. Only one winner of the, all the games would get the reward, a temporal reward. How very different from imperishable rewards that, the, that is the prize received of the Christians who run that we re receive a reward that perish not. Those of us who press toward the goal of the upward call of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every believer who disciplines him or herself, especially in the world that we live in now, they discipline themselves and, and, and exercise what I consider to be self-control uh, for the sake of Christ. The promises that we, we're looking for is imperishable. So we discipline ourselves under a different drumbeat because we all run this race for the same purpose, to receive the prize. It amazes me how I'm not a runner, but I, I watch certain things. And I watch when they're running track. Uh, they have lanes. Am I right? They have lanes. And each runner has what? A lane. And so I found out, if nothing else, if I ever intend to get to the end of this race, and I don't want to be disqualified, the first thing i got to learn how to do is stay in my lane. I thought I'd wake you up so we can go on and have church now. The first thing we have to do is stay in our lane. Many of us, many of us sitting here and there are many of us on Facebook, we want to be in everyone's lane but our own. And, and God's not going to allow that because you not only are hindering others, you're hindering yourself. And you're tying up what? The race. Praise God. So... I, I watch how they, how they run. They, 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 they have to be trained. They have to be temperament in running this race. This race has rules. It has regulations. Many people to, uh, that we live in life to get, today, they go through life noticing the accomplishments of other people. And they try to mimic themselves at, like other people. And they want to run the race like other people run it. But if you got your own lane, you, 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 you follow what I'm saying? You have to run the race that God has what? Given you. You can't run someone else's race. Praise God. I've got to run my own race. I don't have to compare myself with others. 
They, I don't have to take on their assignments because every one of us have our own assignment that God has given us. Yes, we are running a race in this world we live in today. And we have to be taught how to be temperament. We have to be taught how to watch as, as well as pray. We have to be taught how to watch what comes out of our mouth. Taught what we let abide in our hearts. We have, we're running a race. And as you run a race, you have many people on the side of you. And they're running too. Some for good, for, for, good, for temporal, some for, uh, that, that are everlasting. But people are running the race. Everybody trying to get somewhere in this world. Some for good and some for not so good. And you just happen to be entangled with the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. So when we are running this race, we have to be very mindful how we run. There are some rules to the race. Praise the Lord. So hallelujah, hallelujah. There are some rules to the race. Don't copy the behavior of the customs of this world in the race. Everybody's running the race. If you look at people when they go to a race and they do the, the marathons, it's, it's thousands of people out there. Everybody got their own assignment, got their own mind, have their own agenda, how they plan to finish. Everybody's running a race. So we have to be very careful not to get to copy the behavior customs of the world while we're running our race. And it's very hard, it's very hard sometimes not to copy the behavior, you know what I mean by behavior, custom of the world. In other words, if you don't, Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not confirmed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that what? Good and acceptable, is that right? And perfect will of God. You cannot, brothers and sisters, get caught up in the behavior and customs of the world running the race that you're trying to run. Because any time you do that, you become as the person next to you who's probably going to lose also, because only one in those worldly races is going to receive the prize. So, but in, in the race of God, you have to be careful how you run this race. Praise the Lord. I don't want to run too fast, so you have to be very, very careful how you run the race. And I found out that in running, I got a friend that we grew up together, and uh, he runs. He runs all over the place. He goes to different uh, states. He just runs. He just runs. And uh, one day he called me, I had to pick him up and take him to the doctor, he had to have a pacemaker put in. And this puzzled me because I was asking him, you do all of this exercise, and all of this running, and how did this happen to you? He said, I don't know. I do everything that I'm supposed to do. And I looked at him and I said, I love you, but could it be you running the wrong race? And, and, and I, because I, I'm trying to issue him and show him in the race of time, we have to be very mindful that we're running the race that we should be running. This is, a, this is a good friend, so I could have a kind of dialogue with him like that. But in running this race, I found out some things that I thought I had together. And I guess you think you have together, too, that God has designed for us to do. Paul is speaking of running a race because, remember, he said, to the Jew, I became as a Jew. Am I right? To those under the law, I became as those under the law, to those that were not. I, in other words, I became, what did he say? I became all things that I might, what, win some to Christ. Don't get this race Paul's talking about messed up. He did not say I did all things. He said I became all things. See, sometimes people hear I became all things, and you think that means it gives you license to go do what your friend is doing so you can win them to Christ. You'll never win nobody to Christ doing what they're doing. You win them to Christ living like Christ had told you to live. So he says I became all things. In other words, I, came, I, I stooped low enough that they could understand what I'm trying to tell them. You know, sometimes we get so big and our heads get so swole that we couldn't lead nobody to Christ if we could put a chain on their neck. Because of the simple fact that we make things so difficult and we become so, such, so, so absorbed with what we don't do that we don't know how to usher people into the, into the presence of the Lord. Paul is saying, he's saying, I did this so I could reach them with that. And when Paul wanted to reach them, look what he grabs and used. He used what they love doing. He looks like they love to be in arenas, am I right? They love to be racing. And Paul took that very thing and he turned it around. Do you know when you're trying to reach someone, God will show you how? And he took that very thing and he turned it around to show them that how you run for a race for a, for a corruptible crown we run one for an incorruptible crown. In other words, what you're running for will perish. What I'm running for is eternal. So, so what Paul is saying, he's saying that 
Each one of us as a Christian, we have our race to run. Old folks used to say this, they used to say, make sure you get your row out. And y'all remember that? So we all have our race to run in this life. Do you not know I can't run Sister Walker's race? I'm, too, I'm probably too slow, probably too fast. And see, some of the, some of the things that go on in her race, in her, in her, her lane, I would probably not want to do. No one can run someone else's race. We all run our own race, and we do our own assignment that God has given us. First thing I want to follow about my race, and I'm going to get through this with you this morning. First thing I do, I find a, a motivator, something to motivate me to run. I'm not a runner. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not even encouraged when I see other folks running. I don't see people running and say, oh, I like, I like to do that. See, so I have to just change this a little bit this morning. Is that all right? I might do a little walking. But, you know, I heard Mr. Brazier say one time, don't listen, walk, if you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, scratch. If you can't scratch, wobble. Just keep moving. And so I believe that, that what Paul is saying here is, is basically saying you don't give up. And you run across the, according to the principles and precepts that God has given you. Praise the Lord. So find another who can be your pace setter. Sometimes we need a pace setter. Someone whose speed will change your own. You make it your goal to stick behind them during the race. This illustrates a biblical principle that the Apostle Paul was saying. When he's this biblical principle, you'll see, you'll find in Philippians 3 and 17. Watch what he says. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have seen in us. In other words, when you're trying to do something, brothers and sisters, you've got to be very careful about who's watching you. Because I guarantee you, somebody eyeballing you. Somebody's always watching you at home. Somebody's watching you. confess to be a Christian, so you have to be very, very mindful, if you will, that you walk upright before God. Didn't I just tell you, I'll be a preacher, shall I preach this other to others and be myself a castaway? So when you're running this race, you've got to be mindful that somebody's watching how you run. Praise the Lord. So, so here, when, when you look for, a, I look for a motivator that will encourage me to run. I watch their speed. Nobody wants to be left behind. So you watch their speed as they run. You got a race to run. You got a race to run that's your individual race. You're going to be accountable for the things that you've done in this body. Nobody sitting next to you can run your race, and they can have no business in your lane. There's some things that God has just for you and for you only. And Paul says, Im Im imitating me. He doesn't say be me. He says imitating me because the things that I'm doing, I think enough of myself to say that I'm worth you watching. How many people here really are living a life that you're worth somebody else watching? Praise the Lord. So the people, you, first you find something to motivate you to run this race in Jesus Christ because, see, that's why. That's why the Bible is very clear that we says, forsake ye not yourself to fellowship one with another. Because we need to sharpen up each other. We need to hang out with each other. We need to encourage each other. Because the world doesn't do that for a Christian. A Christian only gets that from the world. That's why we're, even when you're home, so a lot of us live in homes where people are not saved but us. We're the only one carrying a Bible in there. We're the only one praying in there. So if you're the only one in there that are doing these things, don't fool yourself and think you have a monopoly on Jesus. You got some folks that are sitting there watching you because they say, if this much Jesus is in you, I'm going to watch you until I see. And they're watching for an arrow. But you know what? When they don't see one, then they get in their lane. When they don't see you cursing at them, then they get in. And you know some folk can make you so mad that you want to say something that you know you can't say. So you don't say it. You hold it down. You don't say it. You keep it in. Mm. Lord, help me here. Lord, intervene here. You know how you hush up in your mind. But you know what? If you're cursing in your heart, you might as well say it. Because God, God is saying right here now, if you cannot listen, my brothers and sisters, see, this is the walk. This is the time for us to run the race that's set before us. This is the time for us to act like we're a Christian. If you're a dog, go somewhere and bark. But if you're a Christian, stand up and act like one. Because the world is watching you. If they kept you wobbling in your lane, one day you're over here in my lane, one day you're over here in somebody else's lane, anybody with any kind of common sense, see all these striped lanes, know you out of order. 
Because see, what happens here is that there is a race that we should run and people are watching us as we run this race. People are watching us. Have you ever seen a race or one of these, uh, 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 when, they, when everybody just run, was it a marathon or what, for, for different uh, 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 fundraisers or what you would say? When you see them running and then you'd be wondering, why are they still out there in this dark? Why, 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 why don't they go home? And then all of a sudden you see somebody coming in a wheelchair. You see somebody coming as people are caring. Why? Because the race is not finished. To the last participant, to the last faithful runner gets across. And I guarantee you, this race will not be finished until the last one of us come across. Praise God's mighty name. So he says, join me in intimidating me uh, uh, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have seen in us. This is how you run your race. You can't run your race watching the news all day long. You can't run the race because the news will deter you from what you are about. You, you, I can't watch the news and not, not, not get mad. I ain't watch no news and don't get mad. I, can't, I get angry. I watch the news. If I ain't careful, I'd be like Paul said, don't be. I'd be fighting against the wind. You, 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 you cannot live in this world like that. You have to be focused on the thing that you work so hard for. When these people get ready to run a race, they prepare for the race. They do vigorous work for the race. When they get ready to run this race, their mind is not on home. Their mind is not on their children, not on their family. They got one thing on their mind. Running this race. Praise God. So it's one thing that when we run the race, once I find my motivator, and if I want to keep up with what motivates me, I got to get rid of some weight. I got to get rid of some weight because I want to run this race, but I can't run it with my daughter hanging on me, my son hanging on me, my job hanging on me, my husband hanging on me, my wife hanging on me, my problems with my bills hanging on me. A sickness hanging on me. I just can't run it with all that on me. Because the race, anytime you run a race, we see it that in order to run a race well, we must cast off all the weight. You don't see a, 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 a runner running a race with ankle weights on. When he runs a weight race, he takes off all of the weight. And see, when you're not running a race, but you're still in the lane. You feel awkward because you're not moving and everybody else is running. And if they have races where they have the round circle where they run around, and how you set up looking and you standing there and everybody keep passing you by over and over again. Because when you're set to run a race, you're there to run a race. And so you have to, you have to, you have to lighten yourself because lighter means faster. Sometimes when you're a little lighter in your load, you have a tendency to pray better. You have a tendency to read better. You have a tendency to focus better. Because you can't run this race with everybody's assignment. You can't run this race with all the baggage of life. You can't run this race worrying about what people said about you, what people have done to you. You're not going to make it. You can't run this race. And you have to run it. You have to run it. Because you have no choice. If runners want to perform their very best, they will make sure that they are not weighed down by cumbersome loads, heavy loads, and loads that are just too much for them to bear. Weighted down and trying to run the race. You may run, but you won't run fast. But this is what Paul says in Hebrews 12, 1, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, look at this, let us also lay aside. I told you, you can't do it. Let us lay aside every weight and sin, which clings, did you hear that? So closely, and let us run with endurance. You see this? The race, Lord help us this morning, that is set before us. Here again, he is using the terminology that it's a race that we're in. He said, let us run the race that is set before us, Looking, this is what you do, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. That's how you run this Christian race. 
Because if you try to run this Christian race carrying all these loads, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. I, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he, he uh, asked the question, and I answered it. He said, Brother Walker, he said, how do you deal with it when, you, when your children are grown and you're going through? Well, I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to like it. The Bible says train up a child in the way they ought to go. That when they get older, it get put in their own lane. That's what I'm reading here. That they won't depart from it. But you going to raise them and you up in their lane and tell them they should be grown. Well, I get grown if you get off my back because you got weight on me. But I'm trying to help you, but let me go so that I can run my race. Do you, y'all, put, y'all putting that together? Y'all putting that together? Let me go because, see, that's some baggage that you blaming on a child you put on yourself. If you got mad at me, don't go home and don't turn me off. But these are weights that we take on. That's not your assignment no more. Your assignment ends once a child gets older. Once a child becomes an adult, your assignment is over. I don't say don't help them. I say don't try and keep them. Did I help somebody? Anybody happy about that? Because even the eagle stir up a nest. And, and, and it brings weight on you because even in the best of our children, I got good children. But when they go, let's see them go. Because they have to live their life running their lane. You follow what I'm saying? So Paul is saying, he said, see the weights that we, we consider, things that we consider heavy on us, we, these are self uh, uh, assumed, uh, consumed weights. We bring things on ourselves that God had nothing to do with that. And, and when, you, when, you, when, you, when you dealt with a situation, go on about your business. What you're trying, to, you're trying to deal with it, then you're trying to make it happen. You know what I tell married people when I marry? I'm going to marry you. Your daughter should have told you this. But when you leave here, I spend six sessions counseling you. I am not going to follow you home. You get by there, you open this book, and you make it work. What am I telling them? You're in your own lane now. Run your race. See, even when you run a race, and somebody said this morning, I heard you call me up here. You could have you mumbled it through your mask. I would have worked it for you. When you got a spouse, and two have become one, pastor, how do we run this race? Well, even though you got a spouse, now we're running that, that race where you hold the baton. You run so far and don't, don't want to keep it and run by me. Hand me the baton. Says Walker, let me finish this race. Hallelujah. Do you understand? We're in the same lane. But you have been in charge, brother, and been in the overseer and the keeper of a, of a family. You should finish the race. The strength should lie in the last one that is waiting. When that last one, they will never put the one that can't run last because he can't win. They will put the one that can run last, and when he get it, he flies. Why? Because everyone is dependent on me. Lord, help me preach this thing. To win and cross this race. Is that right? Praise God. So you can't do it with all the weight and all the baggage. And you know you got enough of your own without taking all this other worldly stuff on. You'll be surprised how things will creep into your spirit. And you don't even know they're there. Got into your, your mind because coming through your ears, and you've given so much attention to it. Listen, let me help you with this. God will never give you something to talk about. He will only give you something to pray about. When the Lord gives you something, it's to pray about. Not to just talk, talk, talk. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because... Well, immediately when you receive something that hurts you, when you receive something that affects you, you have a tendency to linger on with it. 
You know, you know what I'm saying? When, when you receive something, immediately you go into what? Prayer. And, and ask the Lord to help you with that. Now, if you got what you're supposed to have in you, it will teach you these things and make you do these things. Praise the Lord. But if it's not there, y'all know what it is. What is it? Uh-oh, we're going to be here a while. The Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. So you have to run this race without all these weights. Every assignment ain't yours. Every assignment is just not yours. And we want to run this race speedily. We want to run this race where we feel ourselves accomplishing and making up, to us, up, up, up time and, and speed. Then the next thing I want to do when I, had to, when I was reading that yesterday afternoon, I had to run this race with stamina. I had to run my race with stamina. I, I, I just can't. You know, I, what, you know where that word stamina came? <laughs> I had to change the word I had. Because next door to me, they got all these dogs. And my office is right there, and the dogs went to hollering. Woo, woo, woo. I said, oh, no, this ain't going to work. But see, it was taking me from what? Where I should be on my race. So I, I, put, I had to run this race with stamina. You don't just show up on the day of the race. An expert to do well, if you expect to do well, rather you sign up months ahead to be in these races. Sometimes a year ahead, you learn to what kind of course it is. If it is hilly or if it is flat, you learn, you learn what the weather is going to be. Will it be cold or will it be warm? And so on. So to the Christian life, we must prepare our, ourselves for what lies ahead before us. Before us. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we, 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 when we are expecting things to happen, we prepare them, prepare for them by the Spirit's power. You say, we don't, we, don't, we don't give up. When we go see what the race is like, most people would walk the track. Somebody told me that about Tom Brady. They'll say he come and he walks the field. People will walk, walk the track, and they, they will we see where the bumps is and where the hills go. Because I never knew that those tracks went like this. I never knew that, that they went like this, a lot of those tracks. They go like this. And whatever lane you may be in, there's, a, there's an advantage to your lane, and there's a disadvantage to your lane. And I never knew that. You had to be able to adjust to the track that you're running on. So no one comes the day of the race and try to prepare for it. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? So, 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 so what we do as Christians, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be there with us when the unexpected arrives. We don't, we don't show up when the day comes to run and then we find ourselves going up a hill we didn't expect. We find ourselves then doing and, and, and counting a curve that we didn't know was there. We, we, we find a rocky, rocky path that we, we really can't handle. We don't, we don't do that. So, so when we run the race, we make sure we got the right what? Shoes on. You, you see what I'm saying? We make sure that we, we have the right gear for the race that we're going to run. Because if we don't prepare for the race, when the race comes, we, when there's hills there and there's, and, there's, and, there's, and there's rocky roads there, we will stop running. Why? Because the minute our feet get hurt, y'all don't hear me. In other words, the minute somebody step on your pride, the minute sometime you, you, you face a situation that is uphill and you feel that you cannot handle it, the minute something goes wrong, you'll stop running. Praise God. If Solomon in, 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 uh, uh, said once, and uh, Ecclesiastes 19 and, and 11, he talks about it. He says, return, I return the song to the son that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But watch what he says. He says, but time and chance come upon them all. In other words, he's saying opportunity and occurrences come upon them all. So in this race, time and chance is going to happen. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Opportunity and occurrences in life. That's life. That's what's going to happen. And if you have not prepared for these things, how, what am I talking about prepare? In prayer and supplication, you have not prepared by spending time in the word of the Lord that when you can hear the soft, still voice, that when you go up on these things, when you're there coming before you, you'll hear a voice say, this is the way. Go ye therein. It will tell you trouble is out ahead. If you do like you ride on the road, you see signs that say detour. 
You see signs that say sharp turn. You see all of these things. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. Once you spend time with the Lord, it will start telling you detour. It will start telling you there's a stop ahead. It will stop telling you there's a dead end coming up there. It will start telling you that the enemy is around the corner. It will start telling you don't go there. How many of you have seen an accident in your life when you're riding on the expressway? You got mad as I don't know what because something delayed you when you left home. And when you got so far, you saw a tragedy, an accident that was horrible. And if you had been, you say, God, if I had been a little long while earlier, it could have been me. And what I'm telling you is that what has happened, he says there, chance, he says, happened unto them all. Opportunity and occurrences. We cannot avoid those things. So how many of us know these things have happened in life, but just because you were running your race, God stepped in, went ahead of you. God never goes behind you. Like I told you last week, when you're looking for God, God is facing you. Never think you have to find God. When you're looking for him, God is facing you. Opportunity and occurrences are a way of life. We can, you're not going to get more than me. I'm not going to get more than you. This is just what happens. When we're running this race, the enemy comes to devour us. He comes to stop us. He comes to hinder us. He'll throw some pebbles on the track. He'll throw, he'll throw some leaves on the track. He'll throw some dirt on the track. He'll, oh, y'all hear me. He'll throw some, some troubles on the track. He throws financial blisters on the track. He throws sickness on the track. He throws children disobedient on the track. He throws spouses ain't getting along on the track. He throws unemployment on the track. He throws everything on the track. Because he know if you run this race well, it's not given to the swift, but it is given to him that endureth to the end. Run, I tell you. Run when it's rough. Run, I tell you. Run if it's a hilly track. Run if it's a smooth track. Run if it's a rocky track. Don't stop running. Run your race, my brothers and sisters. Run your race. Peter says, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though some strange thing. Don't be surprised when it comes Upon you to test you. Track ain't always smooth. Sometimes the track is weary. Sometimes the track is troubling. Sometimes the, time the track is, does not feel that you're being treated justly. But you cannot stop running the race because of how you feel. Because a, a racer on a track with people who have prepared, people who have labored and put themselves in position. And you on the track with all your emotions, you might as not well not run. No strange thing happened to us. First John three and thirteen says, "Marvel not thy brother, if the world hates you, and throw it on your track. Remember, it hated me before it hated you. So all these things going to hit the track, brothers and sisters." As we try to run this track. Don't hinder me from running my race. And I won't hinder you from running yours. Praise the Lord. And lastly, I told you about getting distracted. How many things come in your life that just distract you? Do you have a prayer, a prayer time through the period of a day? A whole day, 24 hours. Do you have a time that you just set aside on Facebook, you people listening to me? Do you have a time that you just set aside, that you just spend with God? That you, that you, you don't spend with your spouse, you don't spend with your children. Just a time where you shut the door. And before you open your mouth and you say, I can't say nothing now, all you got to say is, Lord, you know. Mm. You know, Lord. And he'll begin to talk to you. Hallelujah. He'll begin to commune with you, I'm telling you. Because sometimes you can live with somebody that you, didn't, you don't mind spending a day not saying a word to at all. And you just want to spend a little time with the Lord. And you, and you know, most people now, when you try this, some of you, if you haven't been doing it like I do it every day, if you haven't been doing it and you start this now, don't be offended. 
when they ask you this question, what's wrong with you? Because you brought a change into the environment. So changes have to be adapted to gradually. So you, you have an understanding on how to say I'm just praying. Talking to the Lord. Anybody that you tell that to will, will tell you, I guarantee you, okay, go ahead on. Think too many folk don't mess with God. So, marvel not, brother. They hated you. The devil throws everything he can at you on your track while you're trying to run. Jump over that mess. Don't go through it and mess up your Holy Ghost feet. Jump over it, I tell you. Jump over that mess. But don't stop running your race. So in order for me to be successful and for you to be successful, my brothers and sisters, do what we do. Keep our eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize. When a runner is running, they don't see the finish line visibly. Am I right? They see it when it's over. See, don't be like Thomas where you have to see the finish line visibly. Be what Jesus said you would be. Thomas, you see because you, you believe because you see me. But blessed are those that have not seen. They have not seen the finish line, but they keep on running. They've been hindered all the time running their race, but they keep jumping over trouble. Keep sidestepping adversity. Thomas, blessed are them that believe and they have not seen me at all. Running my race. Keep your eyes on the prize. The most important aspect of running our Christian race is keeping our eyes on the prize. Because any time you take your eye off it, Satan going to put his eye on you. I guarantee you that. Keep your eye on the prize. Prize of his high calling. You got to keep your eye on the prize. You can't run. You can't, you can't, you can't run. Y'all following me? You can't, who, who you ever seen win a, win a track race looking back? Who, who have you ever seen win a track race? Listen, I'm telling you something because some of you here and some of you on social media have been hurt. People have hurt you. People have abused you. People have done things to you that have scarred you and it's looked like he scarred you for your life. But you can't run this race if you keep looking back. Because everything you're looking back at, if you notice, is not gaining on you. So you run this race looking for a prize that's much better than what you have looking back. Every mirror in my car, I looked at them this morning. I can see what's behind me, but I don't have to turn my head to do it. I can corner out one eye, corner out another eye, then look up. But you never have to turn your head and look back there. To see what's behind you. Praise God. Luke 9 says what to us? No one who puts his hand on the plow and looking back. Is that right? And looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's verse 62. Luke 9. No one who puts his hand on the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't run the race. And, and, and when, when I would go out in the field and my uncle would be, or my cousin would be plowing, we'd be over there thorning. You can call it picking cotton if you want. Thorning. Hands bleeding and all this stuff. I would watch what my uncle would tell him. He said, boy, quit looking over there at Victor Murrow. Keep this road straight. What was he telling him? You plowing. And you're making a crooked road. So if you're looking back, you're over in somebody else's 
lane. And I think at some point, they disqualify you. Because what you're doing, you would, when you're plowing, you have to look forward to where you're going. You do not look back. Matthew 24 and 12 through 13, it says, And because of iniquity, watch this, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same, the same now, shall be saved. Now, I'm going to share with you your world today. We'll, we'll be through. He says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax, what? Cold. The world is in a place now. I don't care how good they try and fix it up for you. Where it's more cold-hearted folk than you've ever seen in your life. Iniquity seems to be a way of life. We have adopted rules and laws into our system that have not only excluded Jesus, but have threw God out all the way. And we have to sit up and be Christian and live in this stuff. But we got to do what Paul said. I became as this. I just didn't do this. In other words, he's saying, don't eliminate yourself. Because somebody can, someone can get saved. But learn how to be a light in darkness. Learn how to be of some good in a wasteful place. What he's saying there, he's saying, because there's... Those things with iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. But he says this, but he that shall endure, Jesus said, until the end, the same, the same person shall be saved. You cannot pick what you want to endure. No more than you can pick what's going to be on your track. But what you can do is endure to the end. How are you willing to run your race? You can't run somebody else's. You will not be accountable for the race they ran, but you will be accountable for the way you ran your race. And in doing that, brothers and sisters, hearing and seeing what he's broke this down, the man had something going for himself. And what he had there was he knew that he had the Holy Spirit living in him. He said it himself, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb to reveal his son in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. If you have not, if you have not experienced the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you will confer with flesh and blood. You will adapt to the things of the world. Why? Because you got nothing in you that's different. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, now you can say what Paul said. He looked at Timothy, well, not look, it was a letter, but he said to Timothy, Timothy, 2, 2 Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished, what did he say? The race. I have kept the faith. Now I'm ready to be what? Accepted. Don't you tell me it's not a race. And it's a race that everyone has to run. He says, I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight. He didn't say me and my, 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 my fellow brethren. Listen here on Facebook. He, he didn't say me and Timothy, you. He didn't say me and, and, and Silas. He didn't say me. Or, or, or James, or Peter, or John. He didn't say me and them. He says, I have finished. In other words, everyone here and everyone on Facebook and everyone on social media, you got to finish for yourself. You can't finish it for nobody else. He says, I have finished. I have kept. Do you hear what he says here? And I have kept the faith. God has an individual plan for our lives. It's individual. If we make this, the mistake of trying to copy other people, we will eventually start mimicking other people, not ever receiving what God has for us because we're trying to be like someone else. Being original. 
in Christ Jesus. If you were like somebody else, you'd have the same fingerprints. Why does everyone in here have different fingerprints? God is saying right then and there, I don't care what signs, who tell you what. God did that. So he who can be identified, no one can take your identity. Lord, help me preach this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because your, your fingerprints, if they take them and they put them in, and they look at you in a police station or wherever, they can tell all about you. God is saying, what more can I do? Your fingerprints, won't, 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 I will not be Brother Somerville when my fingerprints hit. He can try and take the rap from me all he wants. But they'll say, oh no, you can go home. He's going to pay for this. That's what God is saying. He shows us the single identity. Be an original. God didn't make you a mimic or anyone else. He made each one of us here special and with different gifts deferring one to another. Be an original. Don't copy the behavior of the customs of this world. You don't know how powerful you are and how much God has invested in you. And if you're on here this morning and have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you thought that when you came on here, you thought that you were no good. They told you. I don't know what you're in here for because you don't know what you did last night. But that's all right. God know what you did. He know what they did too. So I'm telling you that if you heard this and you're willing now, you say, God, I want to run my race right. I need help running this race because I've been in everybody's lane. I need help because all the things on my track, instead of leaping over them, I picked them up. And I engaged with them. But I did that out of ignorance. I didn't know. Not like the Holy Spirit is nudging me right now. And if you believe that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross for the remission of your sins, was raised the third day, and now is at the right hand of the Father, making intercession. I'm telling you, if you believe that, the Bible says, what saints? Thou shalt be saved. I said, if you believe it. Praise God. So God bless you. God bless you. Let us thank God for our people on Facebook and all of you here. All of you here. And maybe, I don't know, maybe there's someone here now. We never fail to give an opportunity for someone to give themselves to Jesus.